This program originates live with the NBC Television Network. NBC Sports presents the 1965 World Series. From Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Los Angeles Dodgers meeting the Minnesota Twins. Brought, Brought to you by Limited and its dealers who sell Imperial, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Valiant, Dodge and Fargo Trucks from Chrysler Canada Limited. And by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the slim, adjustable razor. The Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. Foamy, the cream of all instant lathers. Right Guard, spray deodorant, and new Heads Up, hairdressing for men. With Vin Scully, welcoming you to Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, and the second game of the 1965 World Series. In appreciation for your continued support, Chrysler Corporation and the Gillette Safety Razor Company bring you this series and such other outstanding events as the All-Star Baseball Game, NCAA College Football, and the 1965 Rose Bowl Game, exclusively on NBC. As you may have guessed, the weatherman has not been kind. And as one diehard baseball fan said not long ago, remembering the prediction of yesterday that today's weather would be good for the game, he said of the weatherman, promises, promises, promises. It began to rain about one hour after the conclusion of yesterday's game. And in the general area of the Twin Cities, it rained hard much of last evening. It slacked off this morning. And within the last hour or so, there has been no heavy rain, just a series of disturbing drizzles. And just about every means known to a groundskeeping crew, crew has been used to try and get this field in good playing condition. For want of a better phrase, we have decided that that awesome-looking gadget there would be known as a civilian flamethrower. And they have been uh, used from time to time by the ground crew here at Metropolitan Stadium during the regular season to try and get the field in playable condition. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. Now, a little while ago, the use of a helicopter to try and get the outfield in a much better playing condition than it was when the folks first arrived here. And by way of videotape, we thought you might like to see how a helicopter is used to get a baseball field ready for play. Now, we'll tell you again, over the last hour, the rain here at Metropolitan Stadium has not been a hard rain. It's just been a series of annoying drizzles. In fact, the weatherman has said, as far as the forecast was concerned, that to all outward appearances, the rain should leave, but then, quote, the clouds have shown a tendency to remain in the area. This scene was taped just a bit earlier this morning here at Metropolitan Stadium. As of right now, the game will be played. And as of right now, the weatherman is still optimistic. And so are we. Neither team had an opportunity to take batting practice. There was a pass made at infield practice, but not the type uh, usually held before a game. The infield, of course, will be in good condition. The outfield will be wet in spots. The warning track has had a type of substance applied which brings up uh, 
which causes the rain to, uh, well, to do less damage than it ordinarily would. Here at Metropolitan Stadium, it's 344 feet to the foul line in left. In the so-called power alley, 365 feet in left center. Straightaway center field is 430 feet. Now, this is an increase of 20 feet over last season, the last regular season. So 430 feet to straightaway center. And then the, uh, at 402 in deep left and right center, the power alley in right center field, as in left center, 365 feet. And to the foul pole in right, 330 feet, although it quickly falls away. The pitchers for today's game as announced, and it will be a battle of left-handers. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, the incomparable Sandy Koufax will be pitching. We do not have time at this moment to list all of Sandy's accomplishments this season in aiding the Dodgers to their place in this 1965 World Series. Suffice it to say, at this moment, he won 26 games and lost only eight, and again, led the National League. This is the fourth year in a row he's led the National League with an earned run average of 2.04. The temperature right now, for those of you who are statistically minded, 56 degrees, the wind is 17 miles an hour, and the humidity is 83%. Now, the commissioner of baseball, of course, makes the decision as to whether this game will get underway, and he is chatting here with Ed Hurley, the chief of the umpiring crew. Meanwhile, as Sandy Koufax is warming up in the Dodger bullpen beyond the right center field fence, so is his opponent for today's game. For the Twins, their top winning left-hander in the regular season, Jim Cott. Cott won 18 games, lost 11, and compiled a very good earned run average of 2.82. And so for this second game of the 1965 World Series, with the Twins having won the opener yesterday by a score of 8-2, to two, so the starting pitchers are getting ready. The infield is still covered, but we have every expectation since it is a bit brighter right now and the rain has momentarily stopped. We have every hope that the game will be underway and if not exactly on time within a moment or so of the scheduled time of 1 p.m. which is central time here in Bloomington, Minnesota. And looking over Sandy Koufax's uh, record for this season, we already mentioned that for the fourth year in a row he led the National League in earned run average. He also was the top man in the league as far as his percentage was concerned with that 26 and 8 record. And he'll be facing a lineup today that is somewhat changed from yesterday for the Twins. At shortstop, it will be Zoilo Versailles, the batting star for the Twins yesterday with four runs batted in. But in center field will be right handed batting Joe Nosick, a first year player for the Twins. The right fielder will again be left handed batting Tony Oliva. The third baseman and cleanup batter will be Harmon Killebrew. The Twins catcher will bat in the five spot today, Earl Batty. A change in left field. Yesterday it was Sandy Valdespino. Today it will be right-handed batting, power hitting Bob Allison. The first baseman will be batting today in the number seven spot, Don Mincher. Rookie Frank Quillacy, who collected two hits in yesterday's big third inning for the Twins, will be at second base and bat eight, and the pitcher will be Jim Cott. And by golly, a light drizzle starts to fall again. So perhaps it's going to be one of those days where it'll rain a little bit and then stop for a while. But uh, the last time we heard anything official from the weatherman, he was still highly optimistic that the game would be played. And as you might expect, just about every type of rain gear and protection from the elements is here at the stadium today. This second game of the 1965 World Series is being brought to you from Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. Your Chrysler Canada dealer presents Hit Parade for 66, a lineup of cars that are bound to lead the parade. Exciting Chrysler. Move up. Enjoy the Chrysler way of life. Big Dodge. Dodge gives you more than ever before. More size, more comfort, more pride. It's a lot more car for your money. Swinging Coronet by Dodge. Coronet's a new idea from Dodge. 
Plymouth, twice the Tiger for 66. There's the hot new Belvedere, a smart new Sizzler from Plymouth. Then there's the big new Plymouth Fury. Nothing goes like Fury. Spirited Valiant. Nobody beats Valiant for value. See them all now at your Chrysler Canada dealers during Hit Parade 66. As the infield remains covered, it is my pleasure now to bring in the broadcaster, the voice of the Los Angeles Dollar, uh, Dodgers, and Vince Scully. I, uh, as a sort of unofficial representative of the Twins, I apologize profusely for what has happened here as far as the weather is concerned. Well, what's that song about a little rain in every life? Thank you, Ray. Hi, everybody. The lights are being turned on here at Metropolitan Stadium, and it is as if everybody in the ballpark trying desperately to ignore the weather. The pitchers are warming up. The umpires have already gone to the dressing room to get the game balls, and in a few minutes, apparently, they're just going to start in the rain. These are the men who will lead it off for the Dodgers. In the number one spot, the captain and shortstop, Maury Wills. Hitting second, Jim Gilliam. In the third spot, Willie Davis. In the cleanup spot against left-handers is the right-hand hitting left fielder, Lou Johnson. Ron Fairley, a left-hand batter, drops to the number five spot against Pott. And then switch hitter Jimmy Lefevre at second base. Switch hitter Wes Parker at first base, hitting seventh. John Roseborough, the veteran, will be behind the plate. And Sandy Koufax on the mound. One of the things, and one pressure spot in this game today, all of the outfielders particularly will have a lot of problems, not only on going after balls, but they know both clubs having fine speed. The outfielders will not only have to charge base hits, which will slow up on the grass, but they will be picking up a wet ball to get back to the infield. And you can bet fellas like Zorlo Visayas and Maury Wills and some of the other speedsters on both clubs We'll try to dare some of the outfielders, and we should have a little bit of a wide open game as far as the hitters challenging the outfielders on. Well, maybe Sandy Koufax and Jim Cott can pitch in the rain, but apparently the governor of Minnesota <laughs> is not going to try because we just get the report that Governor Carl F. Rolbog, the governor of the state of Minnesota, will not throw out the first ball. <laughs> Yeah, we still have the light rain, but the ground crew rolling off the tarp. The infield itself is in good condition. It's been covered. As Ray pointed out to you, it began to rain about one hour after yesterday's game. So the skin part is dry. The treacherous areas will be on the warning track, and certainly for catchers going after foul balls and any infielder going over to the track, it'll be wet and slippery going. In this mechanized age, Minnesota rolling up its tarp, only to bring it up since uh, Ray was talking about the apologies for the weather. <laughs> the Dodgers, since they moved to California, have never been rained out. And of course, uh, they are quite delighted about that. And although they do have a tarp at Dodger Stadium, it has been used sparingly. I think the closest they came to having a game rained out a couple of years ago against the St. Louis Cardinals, it rained Oh, up until about 6 o'clock, and they were working on the field until game time. But the tarp is rolled up for keeps, apparently. There is still a light drizzle. But the pitchers are warming up, and the six umpires are meeting at a home plate, along with Captain Maury Wills and manager Sam Mealy. Sam Mealy is still awaiting news from Quincy, Massachusetts, where his wife is expecting the arrival of their child any moment, so we understand. And the Dodgers kept a date with the star. Left-hand pitcher Jim Brewer of the Dodgers received the happy news that his wife presented him with a bouncing baby girl in Tulsa, Oklahoma today. Those umpires, the plate umpire from the National League, Tony Benson. At first, from the American League, John Flaherty. At second, from the National League, Ed Sudol. And at third, a switch, at least according to the names up on the board. From what we had gathered yesterday, the third base umpire would be Bob Stewart. And then the line umpires would be Ed Hurley at left and Ed Vargo at right. So we had better wait a moment and check third base to be sure. Right now, we'll pause briefly for station identification.
Normally, under regulation game conditions, the game is in the hands of the umpires once the batting cards are exchanged at home plate. However, at the very end of a baseball season during the heat of a pennant race, it is then from all day in the hands of the umpires, and today it's in the hands of the commissioner of baseball forward play. The crowd now standing for our national anthem. Just to refresh your memory, of course, and you don't have to around Minnesota. The Twins yesterday winning in convincing style with eight runs, ten hits, and no errors. And the Twins' power and speed evidenced on home runs by Don Mincher, a three-run home run by Zoila Versalis. There were three doubles and a stolen base by Versalis. For the Dodgers, two runs, ten hits, and one error. They had a home run by Ron Fairley, and their other run came in the ninth inning. Jim Grant thoroughly muffled the Dodger bats yesterday and today in the second game of the series Jim Cott and Sandy Koufax. Tomorrow is a travel day the third game of this 1965 World Series scheduled for Dodger Stadium on Saturday and it will be left-hander Claude Osteen for the Dodgers right-hander Camilo Pasquale for Minnesota. Wills takes a twins lineup back to the Dodger dugout Sam Mealy brings a Dodger lineup over to his dugout and the Minnesota Twins take the field. Setting Minnesota defensively at first base, yesterday's home run hitter, Don Minchu. At second, Frank Quillacy. At shortstop, the star, Zuelo Versailles. And at third, Harmon Killebrew. In the outfield against Colfax, Bob Allison in left, Joe Nosick in center, and Tony Oliva in right. Behind the plate, Earl Batty. And on the mound, left-hander Jim Cott with a record of 18 and 11. Danny Ozark coaching at first for the Dodgers. Over at third, Preston Gomez. Jim Cott, mainstay for the Twins, made 42 starts last year, completed seven. He had two shutouts and appeared three times in relief. He led the league in those 42 starts, equaled his top previous win total, and enjoyed his best percentage of the year. In 1916, uh, 1962, he won 18. In 1964, he won 17. A little while ago, we asked Jim Cott his feelings on facing the Dodgers, and in particular, since his mound opponent would be Sandy Koufax. I feel that I've got to pitch my own ball game against the Dodger hitters and not worry about who's pitching against me. We have a pretty good hitting ball club ourselves, and I think he has all that he wants to worry about, and I think that if I can hold the Dodgers down to one or two runs, well, we're going to score some off from him. Well, Maury Wells will lead it off, followed by Jim Gilliam and Willie Davis. Jim Cott is an exceptionally fine fielding pitcher. A strike. 
Killebrew up inside the bag at third. Minshew about even with the bag at first. And Quillacy is halfway up at second base. Fly ball to right field. Oliva almost in his tracks. Jim Gilliam coming up. Gilliam went one for five yesterday. One advantage you have starting a left-hander against the Dodgers, you take all of their switch hitters and make them right-handed batters, and consequently, they have the extra couple of feet to run to first base. Breaking ball missed, ball one. Fastball hit in the air into shallow right center. Norsick had a late start, almost slipped, but he's still there. As he started to get a jump on the ball, his right foot went out from under him in the wet grass. Two out, Willie Davis the batter. Willie yesterday went one for four. He lined out twice to Tony Oliva in right field, and on one of the plays, Tony made a fine leaping catch. Big curve. 0-1. Killebrew still up on the grass, but everybody else back. Check swing, strike two. Willie Davis is a swinger at the plate in 558 at bats. He walked only 14 times. Little tapper wide of first to Mincher. He underhands to Cott. The Dodgers are out in order in the score at the end of the first half of the first inning. The Dodgers nothing and the Twins coming up. Like the wind with 440 cubic inches of scorching V8 power. Dodge corners like it's on rails. Dodge rides like velvet on a road smoothing 121 inch wheelbase. Dodge is a very exciting car. Thrill to Dodge soon. It's a lot of cars. It's the most car in the popular price field. Get Dodge for 66. Let's take a look at the Dodgers defensively now. There's Wes Parker at first. Jim Lefevre at second. Captain Maury Wills at short. Jim Gilliam at third. Lou Johnson in left. Willie Davis in center. Ron Fairley in right. Johnny Roseboro behind the plate. And Sandy Koufax on the mound, 26-game winner. He's had three World Series decisions. Jim Lemon coaching at first. And Billy Martin over at third. I asked Zoilover Saez how he thought Koufax would pitch to him and his experience yesterday in facing Drysdale. I think uh, uh, my Koufax throw me Today on the first pitch, I'm gonna get it for a court. And uh, yesterday pitch, uh, they threw me, uh, struck me out, I should say, with a fast ball uh, around the letter. But uh, the second uh, time that he threw me was a fast ball, but just was uh, by five inches down the letter. And uh, I got a, a good piece of wood out of it, and uh, I was lucky to hit the ball part out of the park. Well, Zoilo was guessing correctly. Koufax curved him with the first pitch, but it was very high. Ball one. Another curve. Strike. One and one. Sandy's equipment, fastball, curveball, and a forkball, which he started to work with early this year. Fastball. Fouled out of way. One and two.
The name Colfax, of course, is now synonymous with strikeouts. Against the Yankees in 1963, he set a World Series record. He struck out the first five batters he faced. That was the game in which he set a World Series record of 15 strikeouts. And in his two appearances against the Yankees, he set a record of 23 strikeouts in one series. Fly ball into shallow right. Lefevre out, barely in. It's barely. One away. Here is Joe Nosek. Nosek had two home runs during the regular season. Alternating with Jimmy Hall in center. Gilliam plays him about even with the bag. High fly ball to left field. Johnson goes back, still on the grass. Now on the track and makes the catch. Well, we asked Sandy Colfax about his philosophy and what the World Series means to him after a tough end race. And here's what he said. We've had a good year, the Dodgers, and uh, sometimes it's hard to feel like uh, when you come through a tough race that uh, you're really up for it. But I think everybody in our ball club wants to and is trying very hard to, to win the World Series. Uh, no matter how good a year you've had, you feel like it's not complete until you've done a good job in the series. Two out in the first inning, and here is the great Tony Oliva. Oliva, oddly enough, with all of the base hits 10 and the eight runs scored yesterday, his big bat was quiet, and in a sense, that is comforting to the Twins. Curveball, hit back to Koufax. That'll do it. The Twins are out in order, and the score at the end of one inning of play. The Dodgers nothing, the Twins nothing. If you like your excitement big and beautiful, meet your kind of car. Chrysler Sport 300. This is the Chrysler that's as young as you feel. This is the Chrysler that was designed for the adventuresome. Chrysler Sport 300 is all action. Action up front with a screaming 440 V8. Action in motion with precise cat quick handling. Sport 300 is a new breed Chrysler for a new breed of man. Perhaps you, perhaps now. Move up, thrill to and enjoy the Chrysler way of life. See the spirited Chrysler Sport 300, the easy to own Windsor, or the luxurious New Yorker at your Chrysler dealers now. Second inning, no score in the ball game, and this 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. Second inning, Lou Johnson, Ron Fairley, and Jim Lefevre against Jim Conn. Johnson went one for four yesterday. Good breaking ball. 0 and 1. Cott's number one pitch, so they tell us, is his fastball. But you have to have pretty good curve to win 18. Bouncer foul outside a third down the line. 0 and 2. It is dark and gray and damp and a little bit drizzling, but what's most important, they're playing. He showed him that fastball, 1 and 2. Johnson crowds the plate. Consequently, he is hit by a lot of pitches. He set a Dodger club record for being hit 16 times this year. Hit down the line, foul. Didn't get around on the fastball. Scott almost had it in there. One and two. Johnson violates a hitter's doctrine in the sense that he looks for the breaking ball an awful lot of times. 
Two and two. Most of these field, you look for the fastball, and you can always correct for the curve. But if you look for the curve, the fastball will be by you. Two and two. There's the fastball fouled away. Two and two. Fastball. Down he goes. But Jim Cott gave him a good fastball up and away, and Johnson went down swinging. Ron Fairley went one for four, hit a home run yesterday. Killebrew plays him in on the grass at third. That's a little surprising. The pitch is tight. Only in the sense that Ron is not a runner. And he rarely bunts. Against the left-hander, of course, all bets are off. Big bouncer up along first base. Fair ball. Mincher to top. Two down. The switch hitter, Jim LeFever, come up to hit right-handed. He wants a rosin bag before he gets up to the plate. Two out, second inning, no score. Jim Cott and Sandy Koufax, the Dodgers and Twins, second game of the series. Lefevre went one for four yesterday. Fever has some power. I think he is more power batting right handed. He had 12 home runs last year. Fastball hit over the mound. Charging it is second baseman Quillacy to throw him out. And the Dodgers are out in order and the score at the end of an inning and a half. The Dodgers nothing, the Twins nothing. Dodge and Fargo trucks work harder and longer for you. And now, another message from Chrysler. September 26, 1962. Chrysler Canada Limited announced the five-year or 50,000-mile powertrain warranty. These cars carried it, the 1963 Chrysler-built cars. Today, many of these cars have new car warranty left. Think of this when you're buying a new 1966 car. Think of still having warranty protection in 1968, 69, or even 70. Makes sense to buy a car or truck from Chrysler. Metropolitan Stadium, the scene of the 1965 World Series. Plate umpire Tony Venzen went out to the mound for a moment just to inspect it and to make sure it was still pitchable. And Armin Killebrew, Earl Batty, and Bob Allison in that order. Bottom of the second, no score. Killebrew went one for three yesterday, a base hit. Dodgers play him deep and to pull. Curve miss, ball one. Kopak's extremely long fingers. He has the hands of a pianist. One reason why he decided to pick up the fork ball. Curve is over. One and one. It is one reason why he gets such tremendous rotation on the ball. Because of the length of his fingers. Fastball missed. Soon one. Armin Killebrew hit 25 home runs, 75 RBIs during the season. Fastball and a towering fly ball into left center. Willie Davis and Lou Johnson, and it's Lou Johnson. One away. 
That'll bring up catcher Earl Batty. Batty had a base hit to drive in a run yesterday. Wearing a protective helmet. Earl, somewhat like Willie Davis, a uh, first ball hitter if he gets his pitch. One out, light rain falling, second inning, no score. On the corner with the fastball, 0 and 1. So it's raining, but they're playing. Same spot, strike two. Two fastballs on the corner, knee high, 0 and 2 to Batty. Curveball in the dirt, strike three. Dropped by Roseboro, he tagged him. So Kopax records the first strikeout today for his side after Jim Cottage struck out Lou Johnson. And Bob Allison, the batter. Big Bob had 23 home runs, 78 RBIs. He can rip. One ball and no strikes. Benzin put a new ball in play. Sandy uh, sheepishly laughing about that pitch. It hit about three feet in front of the plate. Curve ball. First bite. One and one. Sandy pounding at that rubber. Apparently the rain starting to turn the dirt into mud and it's taking the spikes. High foul off third. Gilliam comes over to the temporary boxes, but no play. One and two. Both left-handers, Jim Codd and Sandy Kopax, will have to contend just with that problem. The spike's still up, you lose your traction, and you begin to slide as you take your long stride towards the plate. And the other problem for both pitchers becomes a, something else to think about. Curve in the dirt. Two and two. Two out, bottom of the second inning. No score. Breaking ball high. Three and two. On deck, the left hand hitting first baseman Don Mincher. In there, strike three call. So the Twins are out in order and the score at the end of two innings of play. Dodgers nothing, Twins nothing. Hiya, folks. I'm twice the Tiger for 66. Yeah, twice the Tiger. This year, there are two great lines of Plymouth cars. The big new Plymouth Fury and the hot new Plymouth Belvedere. Belvedere is the brand new fun-sized Plymouth, a top-performing new kind of Plymouth. Belvedere, packed with power and performance. Belvedere is the hot one for 66. This is the beautiful 66 Plymouth Fury, the Plymouth for people with a taste for big car comfort and roominess, a taste for scan-away power and performance. Plymouth Fury has all this and lots more. Nothing goes like Fury, and Fury, just like Belvedere, is built with famous Plymouth quality and dependability. And both cars are backed by Plymouth's famous warranty. Belvedere Fury. They're the greatest. A reminder, Mickey Rooney guest stars in a powerful drama next Wednesday evening when Bob Hope presents the Chrysler Theater in color at 9, 8 central time on NBC. Third inning, no score in the ball game. Wes Parker, Johnny Roseboro, Sandy Koufax. Killebrew, even with the bag. Parker likes to bunt. The 
Rest of the infield back, with the exception of Killebrew. One and one. As we mentioned earlier, Jim Cott, an excellent fielding pitcher. In there at the knees, one and two. So Cott throwing strikes. Third inning, no score. Two and two. Missed with the fastball. So he's been in and out with Parker and he's gone three and two. Outside with the fastball. And we have our first base runner. A walk to West Parker and the batter will be Johnny Roseboro. The Dodgers with two catchers during the course of the regular season Roseboro went most of the times and when he sat one out it was against the left hander and young Jeff Torborg caught but in the series they go with the veteran fastball for a strike oh and one Curve outside, one and one. West Parker at first base stole 13 bases. And the Dodgers conceivably would play hit and run with Roseboro, who has lost some speed. One and one. Cott thinks so, so he'll drive Parker back. One and one. Boy, he really jammed him with a fastball at the knuckles. Ball two. Two and one. Earl Batty wigwagging signs out to him. Slice to left field. Allison started in, goes back, and makes the catch. And Parker returns to first. One away, and Sandy Kopax coming up. So Jim Cott working with one out and Parker at first base and Sandy Koufax at the plate. Sandy enjoyed a fine season with the bat. He had 20 hits. Takes ball one. For Sandy Koufax to get 20 hits in one season, that equaled the number of hits he had in the three preceding seasons. Twins looking for the bun. In there, one and one. Sandy staring at Preston Gomez to see if the bun is still on. One and one. Full swing that time, fouled away, one and two. Jim Cott, in his delivery to the plate while holding a runner on at first base, has what you could call a pitcher's pitch. He kind of bounces his hands in front of his body while ready to pitch to the plate, and it's that hitch that might help the base runner. There's the bounce. Two and two. However, in bouncing, he does not come to a deliberate set, and it's a little tough to pick off just when he's coming to that stop position. Third inning, no score. There he's set. Bouncer hits slowly down to Quillacy. He looks at second, has to go to first. So Kopak moves Parker over a notch as he grounds out second to first. Two down, and Maury Wills will be the batter. He'll also consume a little time 
to allow Koufax to get back to the dugout. The lights have been on since the start of the game. Angry sky. At the moment, it has stopped raining. Parker at second, two out. Wills picked up an RBI in yesterday's game with a bun single. He had 33 for the season. In direct contrast, the leadoff man for the Twins, Zoilo Versailles, had 77. Hit in the air to right field. Oliva goes back a little. That'll do it. No runs, no hits, a man left. And the score at the end of two and a half innings of play, the Dodgers nothing, the Twins nothing. Swinging people, swinging car. Swinging car of net. Along comes this exciting new car by Dodge. Swinging car of net. And suddenly, all the other cars in its class are really not quite with it. Swinging car of net. Coronet by Dodge makes them all look so, so, so. It's got the most in its class. It's by itself in its class. Here is a car. Swinging coronet. Your Dodge dealer sells it. Get with it. Swinging coronet. Great new car just for you. Get in, get into the swing. Swinging coronet by Dodge. Swinging coronet. We were talking before about the mound at Metropolitan Stadium. It was bothering Koufax, and it apparently bothered Cott a little bit more as the rain and the spike marks complicated matters. And so two members of the ground crew have apparently sprinkled either topsoil or sand out there to try and give the pitcher a dry surface, something to push off. Koufax in two innings with two strikeouts. He has averaged at least a strikeout per inning in his career. For the Minnesota Twins, Don Mincher, Frank Quillacy, and pitcher Jim Cott. And by the way, Jim Cott's a pretty good hitting pitcher. Got a high breaking ball early in yesterday's game and hit a tremendous shot into the right field seat to tie it up. He also walked and Ron Fairley took an extra base hit away from him. He hit the ball hard yesterday. Curve a strike. 0-1. One, one. Before Koufax had the elbow trouble, which has been diagnosed as a traumatic arthritic condition, he used to lean towards first against left-handers. Fastball missed one and one. He would tilt by way of the bag and occasionally even sidearm. But in deference to the sore elbow, he has given that up. Curve fouled off third down the line out of play. One and two. Good folks are here, rain and no rain. They've come well prepared. Koufax trying to get the Dodgers even. Jim Cott trying to give the Twins a strong advantage. Two and two. Dodger infield playing Minshew to pull. Swung around to first. The outfield shaded around to right. Fairly as deep. Ball three. Fastball way out. Metropolitan Stadium. Over, strike three call. So Mincher becomes the third consecutive batter to strike out against Koufax. As we mentioned in the opening remarks, 
In the first game against the Yankees in 1963, he set a World Series record for striking out the first five batters. Here is Frank Coulissey. Played a great game at second base yesterday and had a double and a single in the third inning. One out, third inning, no score. Fastball crowded him, one and one. Fastball fouled away, jammed him. One and two. Yesterday's loser. Taking a look at today, Don Drysdale. One and two. Five or two. Two and two to Frank Quillacy. One out in the third, no score. Curve missed, ball three. Put your own caption to that one. Full count. Fastball high. Here is a good hitting pitcher, Jim Cott. Presenting his credentials, he has a home run and nine RBIs during the regular season, a 247 average, occasionally used as a pinch hitter, and among other things, he likes to bunt for a base hit. So with one out and Quillacy at first base, a wet infield, we'll see what he does. He's around a bunt, takes a strike. Todd has the label, excellent fielder, Colfax would have the label average to fair. Ooh, he was going to swing away after going around as if to bunt. One and one. He's checking with Billy Martin. No score in the third. Frank Quillacy at first held on by West Parker. One out. Quillacy goes. It swung on and missed. Roseboro to Wills. They get him. The Quillacy nailed at second base from Johnny Roseboro to Maury Wills. Two to six. We're going to take another look at that. Change signals. Let's take a look when he steals one. That'll do it. Breaking ball, strike three. Fourth strikeout for Colfax. No runs, no hits, no errors. Score at the end of three. Dodgers nothing, twins nothing. We'll pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. Reminder, friends, this Saturday, NBC will telecast a major college football battle when Duke meets Pitt in the NCAA Game of the Week, live and in color, at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time, 11.30 Central Time, exclusively on NBC. Remember that before every college football game is the Bud Wilkinson NCAA Preview Show.
Fourth inning, no score. Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson. Ball one. Light rain begins to fall again. Gilliam flied to center in the first inning, 0 for 1. Fouled away, 1 and 1. Jim, basically a fastball hitter, and it is his to his advantage to hit back of Wills in one respect, that with a base dealer on base, the next hitter gets a lot of fastball. Ball two. Jim Cott, 18-game winner in his first World Series. Hit in the air to right field. Oliva, who was busy yesterday, is busy today. Tony tied a World Series record for putouts in right field yesterday, and he has three so far today. Here's Willie Davis, and we were wondering about how it felt to hit against left-handers in the World Series or at any time, and here's what Willie said. I faced a lot of left-handers in my time. Uh, this guy I know is a real good uh, pitcher, and he gets the ball over, and they say he has good control, but uh, when I'm swinging good, I don't care whether I'm hitting against a right-hander or a left-hander. It doesn't really make that much difference. 0-1, breaking ball on the corner. Killebrew in on the grass. Soft curve, hit to Minchu. Don underhands to Cott. Two out. We don't have a hit in the game. There have been two base runners. Kopax has walked Quillacy, and Cott walked Parker. Lou Johnson struck out in the second inning, 0 for 1. Curve over, 0 and 1. Johnson can easily get the nickname Suitcase, we mentioned yesterday, in his 13 years. He's now with his 18th club. I think Cut turned that one over a little bit, almost as if it would act like a screwball. 0-2. Oh Fastball hit to dead center, and Nosek has to go and get it to the track. He's got it. That's about 415 to 20 feet away. Dodgers out in order and the score at the end of three and a half innings of play. Dodgers nothing, twins nothing. A reminder, friends, this Saturday, NBC will telecast a major college football battle when Duke meets Pitt in the NCAA Game of the Week. Live and in color at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time, 11.30 Central Time, exclusively on NBC. Remember that before every college football game is the Bud Wilkinson NCAA Preview Show. Fourth inning, no score. Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, Lou Johnson. Ball one. Light rain begins to fall again. Gilliam flied to center in the first inning, 0 for 1. Fouled away, 1 and 1. Jim, basically a fastball hitter, and it is his to his advantage to hit back of Wills in one respect, that with a base dealer on base, the next hitter gets a lot of fastball. Ball 2. Jim Cott. 18-game winner in his first World Series. Hit in the air to right field. Oliva, who was busy yesterday, is busy today. Tony tied a World Series record for putouts in right field yesterday, and he has three so far today. Here's Willie Davis, and we were wondering about how it felt to hit against left-handers in the World Series or at any time, and here's what Willie said. I faced a lot of left-handers in my time. Uh, this guy I know is a real good uh, pitcher, and he gets the ball over, and they say he has good control. But uh, 
When I'm swinging good, I don't care whether I'm hitting against a right-hander or a left-hander. It doesn't really make that much difference. 0-1, breaking ball on the corner. Killebrew in on the grass. Soft curve, hit to Minchu. Don underhands to Cotton. Two out. We don't have a hit in the game. There have been two base runners. Fofax has walked Quillacy, and Cott walked Parker. Lou Johnson struck out in the second inning, 0 for 1. Curve over, 0 and 1. Johnson can easily get the nickname Suitcase. We mentioned yesterday in his 13 years he's now with his 18th club. I think Cut turned that one over a little bit. Almost as if it would act like a screwball. 0 and 2. to dead center and Nosek has to go and get it to the track. He's got it. That's about 415 to 20 feet away. Dodgers out in order and the score at the end of three and a half innings of play. Dodgers nothing, Twins nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. No score in the ball game and quite a game it is. Koufax in three innings has not allowed it. Big day yesterday. He mentioned earlier he expected to be curved the first pitch by Colfax, and he was. Now we'll see about the second time around. Fastball, foul back. Better high fastball. 0 and 2 to Zoilo. He hit one of those no doubt about it type home runs yesterday with two men aboard. Deep in the left. High fastball hit out foul. Way down the line. Kovacs. Got that one way up and way in. But with two strikes, Versailles had to go after it. Oh and two. Breaking ball high. Kofax curve has been a little too high. He has struck out four. Jim Cott has struck out one. Curveball. He got it down and over. Five strikeouts for Colfax. One out, and here is Joe Nosek, who made the major league outfielders play on the drive by Lou Johnson. He really had to go to get it, and he had to run on that wet grass and then the wet, muddy track, and he did it all well. Joe flied to left in the first inning. Gilliam, even with the bag. Curve high. No score, no hits for either side, with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Curve is over. One and one. Fastball, foul back. One and two. Saturday, it'll be left-hander Claude Osteen and right-hander Camilo Pasquale. And the scene will shift to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. One and two. 
high. Two and two. Another breaking ball that stayed up. Two and two. Your master. Third ball. Line to center. Base hit. There's the first hit of the game. Joe Nossick singles on the curveball with one out in the fourth inning for the only hit. And here is Tony Oliva. Oliva hit back to Colfax who threw him out in the first inning. Metal. He threw as hard as he could and he swung as hard as he could. Oh and one. One out, fourth inning, no score. The twins with the only hit. Clean single to center by Joe Nosick. One out. Oh and one to Oliva. Love throw to first. Kofax does not have an extra good move to first. He is not a spawn or a whitey Ford or somebody like that. Fastball, strike two. By the way, game number three, Saturday, 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time from Dodger Stadium in color here on NBC. at first base. Tony Oliva at the plate. One and two the count. Fastball got him. So Oliva becomes strikeout number six for Colfax. And that brings up Harmon Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew Slide to left field in the second inning. Harmon out seven weeks with a dislocated elbow. But he still hit 25 home runs and wound up with 75 RBIs. Curve, ball one. John Nosick. Stole two bases during the regular season. Fastball, left in the left field. Base hit. Nossick to second, makes a turn, stumbled, and goes on. Johnson bobbled the ball, and he's into third, and down to second goes Killebrew. A base hit on an error charged to Lou Johnson. And not to make ourselves look good, but remember earlier we were talking about the rain and the problems the outfielders are going to have on picking up a wet ball. And the fact that base runners would put pressure on the outfielders. And Nosick made a big turn to put pressure on Johnson, and Lou appeared to look up to see where the runner was, and then the wet ball just slipped away from him. And their runners at second and third, two out, no score in the fourth. Earl Batty with first base open and they will pitch to him with Bob Allison on deck. The outfield playing Batty to right field. High and away, ball one. Here in the inning, two singles and an error by Lou Johnson. And the Twins have run as it's second and third.
fastball hit backer first in foul ground. Parker to the box seat railing and makes the catch of the out. For the Twins in the fourth, no runs, two hits, and error, two men left. And the score at the end of four innings of play. The Dodgers nothing, the Twins nothing. Meet a man who's going places. The kind of man who owns and drives the big new 66 Plymouth Fury. Fury has a roomy action style interior. Fury, a big action car. A big luxury car. With a smooth big car torsion air ride. Clean, crisp lines. Real easy to handle. With a performance choice up to the new 440 cubic inch Commando V8. Nothing goes like Fury, the big new action car. A man's kind of car. The big new Plymouth Fury 466. The kind of car you'll want to take the long way home in. Fury is backed by Plymouth's famous warranty. Belvedere. Fury. They're the greatest. Fifth inning, no score in the ball game. How does it feel to play in the World Series? We asked Ron Fairley. I think it was certainly a pleasure uh, being in a World Series, and I'd have to say that my first World Series hit was a home run, and it was certainly a thrill in my life. Uh, although in uh, 1959, uh, uh, we were beaten by the Chicago White Sox, I believe something like 11 to nothing, so I, I know that the fellows are not discouraged at all. No score here in the fifth inning. Fairly, Lefevre, and Parker. Fairly grounded out. Minshew to cot covering in the second inning. Low with the curveball. Fairly bailing out a little bit, as the players say, as cot came by way of first. 1-0. and oh. Sidearm curve over. 1-1. One and, one, and Fairly giving it a lot of room. Another curve fouled away. So all sidearm curveballs in the count one and two. Fairly had a great first half of the season. And then early in August, he bruised the base of his left thumb. He still played and put the bat up into his fingers, more like the way you would hold a golf club, and proceeded to then hurt his left wrist. Curveball hit into right field. So there's the first hit for the Dodgers. Fairly at first. Jim Lefevre grounded out in the second inning to Frank Quillacy. Fairly is not a base running threat at first. Ron stole two bases during the year. No score. Fifth inning. Ball one. Walter Alston feels that Jim Lefevre is the best bunter on the team. He was around to bunt that time. Killebrew tight to the bag at third. Mincher holding fairly at first. Line drive down the left field line and hooking from Allison who dives makes a circus. Minnesota left fielder. We just got to look at that one again. There it is coming up. And remember, he's running on wet grass. And also a muddy, wet warning track. Watch him slide. Great play. So we've come up with a defensive gem in the series. Credited to Bob Allison. And the batter is Wes Parker. Right. No runs, two hits for the Twins. No runs, one hit for the Dodgers. Fastball hits slowly, and Mincher hesitated, and it goes off his glove, and everybody's safe. 
Don Minshew, the first baseman, I believe, thought Cott was going to make a leaping catch of it, hesitated, and by the time he went over, it was off his glove. Even had Minshew come up with the ball cleanly, he was going away from his play, and in the judgment of the official scorers, there are three of them, it's a base hit. So each side with two hits. Here's Roseborough, flied to left in the third inning. You might remember John's brother is with the Ohio State Rose Bowl team in 1955. Ball one. Barely at second, Parker at first, one out on a circus catch by Bob Allison. No score in the fifth. Fastball missed, ball two. The Roseboro checking with Preston Gomez. See if they'll let him hit 2 and 0. There's Fairley at second. Parker at first. One out. In there. Two and one. Second, Parker at first, one out in the fifth, no score. Each side with two hits. Crowd applauding as a park policeman flipped the ball to one of the fans. Two and two. High foul or third. Gillibu coming over on the muddy track. Leans in and back to Roseborough fouls out to Harmon Killebrew, and he had to fight his way to that ball through the wet grass and the muddy track. And here's Sandy Kopak. But Allison's play in left field has changed the entire inning. Two out, two on. Kopak grounded out to Quillacy in the third inning. Fastball. Sandy was guessing fastball. 0 and 1. Sandy trying to plant that right foot. High pop foul off first base. Minshew coming over. He'll hit the muddy track. Makes the catch. For the Dodgers, no runs, two hits, and two left. And the score at the end of four and a half innings of play. Dodgers nothing, Minnesota nothing. The second half of today's World Series game is brought to you by the Gillette Safety Razor Company. A new kind of shave. A new kind of shave you can only get when you shave all the way with Gillette. Only Gillette has the slim twist. Slim molded handle gives you better grip, better balance, better control. This trim head makes shaving those hard to reach places so much easier. The slim twist opens one handed. Insert a precision made Gillette blade with the other hand. Twist again, the blade is locked in perfectly. Only Gillette blades and razors were made for each other. You get a new kind of shave you can only get when you shave all the way with Gillette. Now is the time to get your new Gillette Slim Twist Razor, complete with Gillette blades, in this handy slim case. Only a dollar forty-nine. In direct contrast to yesterday, as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, we got a ball game today. Minnesota nothing, the Dodgers nothing. And now to pick up for the play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Minnesota Twins. Here's Ray Scott. Thank you, Vin Scully. Hi again, everybody, and how many times it happens a man makes the great fielding play, and here he is to bat. 
Bob Allison, a strikeout victim in the second inning. One of six strikeout victims of the Dodgers, Sandy Kopax. He fouls the change curve for strike one. Allison did not play in yesterday's game, playing in left field today as manager Sam Mealy decides to platoon in left, where Allison replaces Valdespino, and in center, where Joe Nosick is playing today instead of Jimmy Hall. No score. Last of the fifth, each team with two hits. Pass ball, strike called on two. Early in the season, Allison came up with a bone fracture in his hand, and he has never been able to really get his timing back. But despite that, he still knocked in 78 runs. Fast ball away from him, ball one, strike two. Allison will be followed by Don Mincher and Frank Quillacy. Fastball fouled back, no change in the count. The Twins posed a two out threat in the fourth with runners at second and third, but Koufax retired batting on a foul pop up. The Dodgers had runners at first and second in the fifth inning, top of this inning with one away, but Roseboro and Koufax were retired on foul pops. Change outside third foul, and it's still one and two. The folks seated right there along the left field line and their counterparts along the right field line are in temporary field boxes. Dodger outfield shaded to the left. And Gilliam is really hugging the line of third. Oh! Inside, 2-2. Two -two. If perchance you were out of the country yesterday, I guess we should tell you that the Twins won the opening game yesterday by a score of 8-2. Strikeout. Roseboro will tag him out. Seven strikeouts for Koufax. Here's Don Mincher, strikeout victim in the third inning. in left center field. National League is working the plate today. Takes that position between the catcher and the batsman. Two and two. Kopax has walked only one. Quillacy in the third inning. While striking out seven. Fastball high, full count.
Frank Quillacy walk in the third inning. Yesterday was Frank's first appearance in the World Series. Now, today's game in stark contrast to yesterday's game where the Twins broke a 1 1 tie with a six run third inning. Little pop up. Second baseman Jim Lefevre grabs it, two down. And applause begins to build as Jim Cott comes striding to the plate. Call out on strikes in the third inning. Cott has good power. Strike. Ball one as the fastball is high. This 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color, exclusively on NBC. And Jim Cott doesn't get the high tight pitch, and it's one and two. Looking to the Dodgers' sixth inning, it will be the top of the order Wills, Gilliam, and Davis. Strikeout number eight for Koufax. The Twins are out and leave one on. At the end of the fifth inning, the score, the Dodgers nothing and the Twins nothing. Stop. Using a stainless steel blade, getting a good shave, the best possible shave. You sure? When you bought it, the stainless steel blade was one of the best in the world. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade. Thanks to this, the Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. What makes it so much better than ordinary stainless steel blades? A new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge. And a smooth new coating more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. Here is a special report from NBC News. special news report was presented, Mari Wills bounced a base hit over third, and for the first time in this World Series, Wills is on base to lead off an inning. Now let's watch how the Twins handle this premier base dealer. Strike. Earl Batty was asked about, what do you do about a Mari Wills when he's a base runner? Well, I guess by now everyone uh, in baseball knows that uh, Maury Will has uh, likes to run, and uh, he will be running in the series if he gets on. So I imagine our only plan of attack will be to try and keep him off of first base. There he goes. Killebrew out at first, and Wills is at second. So Wills breaking. Gilliam is out, Killebrew to Mincher. But Wills is on second with one away 
in this scoreless game, top half of the six. Cott conferring with shortstop Zoil Oversize. The batter will be Willie Davis. Twice has been thrown out Mincher to Cott. Wills has his first stolen base of the 1965 series. I beg your pardon, not a stolen base. <laughs> I'm so carried away by his tremendous record that I want to credit him with something that he doesn't have. Ball one to Willie Davis. Now Killebrew is even with third. The Twins outfield shaded to the right. Versailles is fairly close to second, so Will's lead from second is comparatively shallow. Popped up. Killebrew coming toward the plate. Two down. Wills led off the sixth inning with a bouncer over third. With Killebrew playing shallow, he could not grab it. And Wills was on with a base hit, the third off cut. With Wills going, Gilliam grounded out. Davis then has popped up, and here is Lou Johnson. Struck out in the second. And with a two-strike count in the fourth inning, powdered a Jim Cott fastball to deep center where Joe Nasik was able to run it down about 420 feet from the plate. Ball one is outside. With first base open and a left-handed batter on deck, you can be reasonably certain that Cott will be very careful with Johnson. Runner going. Little number to Mincher. The side is out. At the end of five and a half innings, the score is the Dodgers nothing and the Twins nothing. The scene is Metropolitan Stadium at Bloomington, Minnesota. There is no score. The Twins are coming to bat in the sixth inning. And just as the Dodgers had the top of the order up in their half, so it is with the Twins. Versailles, Nasik, and Oliva. Versailles has flied to right and struck out. Kopax, the number one strikeout pitcher of all time, based on strikeouts in a season, has already whiffed eight. Gilliam even with third. Fastball high, ball one. Foul back, one and one. If this indeed is not Koufax's type of weather, and there uh, seems to be little doubt it just isn't his kind of weather, Boy, he must be something when it's hot. Foul away on the right side as Kopax jams him. Ball and two strikes to Versailles. will resume from Dodger Stadium on Saturday afternoon. 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time. Off the third baseman, Gilliam. Versailles streaking for second. Lou Johnson with the ball. Wicked hopping ball that Gilliam could not hold. It is nonetheless charged as an error to the Dodger third baseman. It's the Dodgers' second error of today. The batter is Nasik. 
A fly ball to left in the first. A solid single to center in the fourth. Gilliam is in a step at third. Parker is even with first. The first out there, Versailles is at third with one away. Huddle at the mound as Tony Oliva comes to the plate. This Sunday, NBC will telecast one of the top American Football League games of the year when the San Diego Chargers meet the Buffalo Bills at Buffalo. That's at 1 Eastern Time, 12 Central Time, live and in color, exclusively on NBC. The Dodgers have been able to handle Oliva in this series. Today, he is tapped weakly back to the mound and struck out. Yesterday, he was hitless in four at-bats. Twice hit the ball to the outfield. The Dodger infield is at the edge of the grass. High ball one. No score. Versailles at third. One out. This is the bottom half of the sixth inning. Versailles at third. Strike one and one. The American League batting champion, Oliva. The game's top winning pitcher, Sandy Kopax. At this point, it's no longer a meeting of statistics. Strike two. Oliva is not necessarily a bad ball hitter, but he has his own idea as to his own strike zone. Catcher John Roseboro. 
second baseman Jim Lefebvre and Kopax huddling with Austin. An error and after a sacrifice consecutive hits by Oliva, Killebrew and Batty. It is two to nothing. The Dodger skipper heads for the dugout. batter is Allison. He has struck out twice, looking in the second and swinging in the fifth. And the Dodger bullpen is active. Killebrew on second, Batty on first, one out. Strike. Batty. Killebrew on second. Dodger outfield is shaded to the left. Foul. The Dodgers, Sandy Koufax, trying to pitch out of even deeper trouble. out by Roseboro. A ball and two strikes. This is the CBC Television Network. A very interested onlooker and attending his last World Series in an official capacity is Commissioner Ford Frick. He is seated in one of the field boxes by the Minnesota dugout. In the seventh inning for the Dodgers, Ron Fairley, Jim Lefevre, and Wes Parker. The Twins have two runs, six hits. The Dodgers, no runs and three hits. And the only errors in the game, two by the Dodgers. American League President Joe Cronin came prepared. And to his right, Mrs. Cronin. Fairley has grounded out and single to right. Today's official attendance exceeds that of yesterday. It is 48,700. The foul is out of play behind the plate. Strike two. Lefty Jim Cott, 18 game winner in the regular season. He was a two to one victor in the pennant clinching game over Washington. He wastes the pitch outside and it's one and two. In 
side of the letters, and it's two and two. In order to pass along information to the expanded press area for this World Series game at Metropolitan Stadium, additional loudspeakers have been placed just outside our television booth. Fly ball in the left, Allison, they sent. So Fairley is two for three. Hit number four off the Twins left-hander, and the batter is Lefevre. There is activity now for the first time today in the Twins' bullpen. Lefevre has grounded out. There's a line drive base hit to left. Last time up, Allison robbed Lefevre of a base hit with a truly outstanding skidding catch of his line drive deep in the left field corner. And so the Dodgers trailing two to nothing come after Cott here in the seventh inning and manager Sam Mealy of the Twins is making his first appearance. He is looking in the direction of the Twins' bullpen beyond the right center field fence. The left-hander is Jim Merritt. The right-hander is Alan Worthington. Hot, for the moment at least, will stay on. Ron Peronoski is working for the Dodgers. He appeared in yesterday's game. So the Dodgers have the first two men on in the seventh with no out. Here is Parker. Walked in the third. An infield hit in the fifth. Batty to Pulisi and the runners move up. One away. Here is John Roseboro. He has flied to left and fouled out to third. Now the Twins have a decision to make. First base is open. The pitcher is due next. Manager Sam Mealy, of course, if he so elects, can force the hand of manager Walt Austin with Kopax due to bat and in the on-deck circle right now. Strike the curve over. The Twins two, the Dodgers nothing. Beginning of the seventh, Dodger runners at second and third with one out. The infield is back. Fouled away, strike two. I should say the infield back with the exception of the third baseman Killebrew. He's only about oh, two steps behind the bag. Outfield is straight away. Foul. Danny Ozark feels it at first. Fairly returns to second. Rather, Lefevre returns to second and Fairly to third. Again, just below the knees, two and two. One of the certainties of baseball, the reaction of the hometown crowd on a close pitch. Base hit. The one run scores. Roseburg is trying for second, and he is in there. It is two to one. So the Dodgers break through, and with only one out, Sandy Koufax is being called back. And Don Drysdale is coming up. This might be, uh, Vin Scully, the first time in the history of a World Series that the first game starting pitcher 
comes up to pinch hit for the second game starting pitcher. <laughs> it sounds that way. I know that Drysdale has pinch hit for Colfax in the past. Come to think of it, I guess he's pinch hit for just about every pitcher on the staff. Drysdale had a regular season batting average of 300. And that's the best of the Dodgers. Seven home runs, 19 runs batted in. In yesterday's game, had an opportunity to bat only one time. He hit the ball hard, but grounded out short to first. The Twins now will have to bring up the infield. Strike one. has recorded but one strikeout in this game. Two. And so with two out, the batter is Mari Wills. In the first and in the third, sent fly balls to right. In the sixth, bounced a base hit over Killebrew into left field. The Twins two, the Dodgers one. Now let's see how the Twins play the infield. Despite the fact that there are two outs, they must protect against the bunt. And so Mincher and Killebrew are up tight. Quillacy is more than halfway. Ball one. Versailles is back almost a normal depth at short. Pop up. In shallow center, Joe Nasi. The Dodgers are out. Two men are left. At the end of six and a half innings to score. Minnesota two, Los Angeles one. Not long ago, the stainless steel blade was one of the best razor blades you could buy. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade because of this, the Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless blade. The new Gillette Super Stainless is better than any other blade you've ever used because of two things. A new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge and a smooth new coating, more effective than anything else discovered. The result, miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shade. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette Super Stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. Sandy Kovax went six innings. Gave up six hits. One run. One run that was earned. Nine strikeouts and one walk. Ron Paranoski takes over. He appeared in yesterday's game, worked two innings, gave up no hits. Although he walked two, he didn't strike out anybody. Paranoski will face Quillacy, the eight batter, the pitcher Cott, and then Versailles. President of the National League, Warren Giles, seated, of course, by the uh, dugout of the National League champion Dodgers. This Saturday, NBC will telecast a major college football battle when Duke meets Pitt in the NCAA game of the week, live and in color at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time, 11.30 Central Time, exclusively on NBC. Remember that before every college football game, the Bud Wilkinson NCAA preview show may be seen. Frank Quillacy walked in the third and popped up in the fifth. 
the Twins two and the Dodgers one in the second game of the 1965 World Series. In the dirt, ball one. Just as yesterday's attendance of 47,797 set a new record for Metropolitan Stadium, so uh, today's crowd means another new record. Fouled at third. A moment ago, you had a look at the Twins' bullpen where Dave Boswell and Jim Perry are working. Billy Martin returns that foul to the mound, and it's ball one and strike one to Frank Willisey. Gilliam, even with third. Outfield just about straight away. Quillacy yesterday doubled and singled in fourth bats. Low ball two, two and one. Hard hit ground ball to Wills. One away. And now the pitcher, Jim Cott. Twice a strikeout victim. Forty-eight thousand and seven hundred here today. Off speed pitch low, ball one. Ball two. Todd is checking signs with third base coach Bill Martin. Fast ball over, two and one. Unless there is a last minute change in the thinking of the respective managers, Claude Osteen will be Walter Alston's choice for the Dodgers' third game on Saturday, and Sam Mealy has uh, said he will go with right hander Camilo Pasqual. Strike out. The first for Paranoski and the tenth of the game for Dodger pitching. And with two out in the seventh, here is the twin shortstop for Saez. For Saez today, 0 for 3. But scored the first run of the game. His grounder got by Gilliam at third for a two-base error. Eventually scored on Oliva's double to left. Two out, none on. This is the last of the seventh. The Twins are leading two to one. Karanowski missing inside, ball one. Looking to the Dodger eighth inning, the two, three, and four batters are scheduled. Gilliam, Davis, and Johnson. Near the right field line. Fairly chasing it in the corner. Versailles is going to try for three. Triple. Hit number seven for the Twins. The first off Paranoski. Versailles on the instant replay, and you can see his tremendous speed in going first to third. Versailles tied for the American League lead in triples in the regular season. 
He had 11. A two-out triple in the last of the seventh, and the batter is Nasik. He's one for two, and he sacrificed Versailles to third in the sixth inning. Ball one. Versailles came way down the line. He's going to try and score. He scores. It would appear that Versailles, by coming halfway home, might have upset Peronoski to the extent that the Dodger left-hander is charged with a wild pitch. And it is three to one, the Twins. As Peronoski started the full windup, Versailles came just about halfway to the plate. It is ball two to Nasik. Ball three. Two out and none on. Strike called and it's three and one. Third baseman Gilliam. And the throw gets beyond the first baseman. And Nasik is at second. And the left fielder right now is moving to second. That's Lou Johnson. An error is charged to the third baseman Gilliam. The batter is Tony Oliva. After going hitless yesterday in four at-bats and in the first two at-bats today facing Kopax, he doubled to left to knock in Versailles with the first run of the game. That is the third Dodger error. Left fielder Lou Johnson. The Twins are out and leave one on and score a run. And so at the end of the seventh inning, the score is Minnesota three and Los Angeles one. You wouldn't think of buying a hat too small or a coat too big. You wouldn't use clubs too long or a gun too short. You insist your mask fits tight, your ball weighs right, but what about your pen? Huh? Never thought about your pen, did you? But size counts there, too. Size makes writing easy or hard, cramped or comfortable. That's why PaperMate designed the three different size, shaped, and weighted pens in the PaperMate Profile Trio. That one's a slim, light, responsive, smart. That's the Husky, real heft and weight masculine and the regular average size and weight the one most people like three pens three sizes shapes and weights the paper mate profile trio pick the one that's right for you Jim Gilliam has committed two errors today but before the ball game he had this to say this is my sixth world series it's always exciting to play in a world series uh, we got shellac pretty good uh, yesterday, but uh, that's one game. I think we'll be back.
Jim Gilliam's thoughts on the eve of this second game. He takes a strike here from Cott in the top of the eighth inning. Strike two. Gilliam in this game is 0 for 3. Cott allowed no hits for four innings, two in the fifth, one in the sixth, and three in the seventh. Foul back. Side, ball one, strike two. Fastball high, two and two. Nasik, the center fielder, making the call and the catch. One out. Here now is the Dodgers center fielder, Willie Davis. Pitless today in three at bats. were turned on before the game started and now it's particularly bright because the sky is lighter as well Mincher to Cott two down the left fielder now Lou Johnson hitless in three at trips Cott today has limited the top four men in the order as of right now to just one hit. Wills, a base hit to left in the sixth inning. Strike. Second baseman Quillacy to Mencher. Three in the eighth inning. And so at the end of seven and a half innings, the score Minnesota three and Los Angeles one. See this man? He's using a stainless steel blade. Has since they were introduced. He thinks they're great. Yet he'll never buy another one. No, he'll never buy another ordinary stainless steel blade. Because the Gillette Super Stainless is here. The totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. Made of a new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge. With a smooth new coating more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette super stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. An enchanting dinner for two becomes a confusing dinner for three when Mona dates a Maharaja tonight on Mona McCluskey. Juliet Prowse stars at 9.30, 8.30 Central Time in color here on NBC. In the last of the eight, before this huge throng at Metropolitan Stadium, a new stadium record crowd of 48,700, the Twins and the Eight will send up Harmon Killebrew, Earl Batty, and Bob Allison. Killebrew has two hits today and three trips and has knocked in a run. Yesterday, one for three. On the mound, Ron Peronoski. Fast ball away from the right-handed batter, ball one. Getting ready for his Saturday starting assignment is left-hander Claude Osteen. 
Ball two, low. Three to one, the Twins leading, bidding for their second straight win in the series. Foul, two and one. Number one for the Twins is third base coach Billy Martin. Peronoski gave up a run in the Twins' seventh inning. A two-out triple by Versailles and then scored on a wild pitch. This 1965 World Series game being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC. Changeup is high and it's ball three, strike one. Second of the game of Dodger pitching. Here is Earl Batty, a single in three trips. Batty is a good hit and run man, and also an excellent bunter. The Dodgers have Gilliam ready to charge the plate. Killebrew not going anywhere. There are no outs in the Twins' eighth inning. The Twins are leading three to one, and Killebrew is on first. Foul off Batty's bat, and it's one and one. Batty has suffered an unusual number of injuries in his athletic career. I asked him yesterday, I had forgotten exactly how many concussions he had suffered. And he said, oh, about five. Three in baseball, two in basketball. Out, on the little pop foul to the catcher, Roseboro, one away. Here is Bob Allison. Three times today, a strikeout victim. Here's what Allison had to say about facing the Dodgers starter today, Sandy Koufax. Well, uh, what I remember about Sandy, of course, is he's got that good fastball and that real good curveball, and, uh, and I've only faced him a couple times. And the first time I faced him was in Vero Beach in Florida in spring training, and I hit a home run off from him. And the second time, I don't know if I hit a home run or what. Uh, evidently, I didn't because I don't remember it. But uh, probably I might have struck out against that uh, real good curveball he's got. Strike one to Allison here facing Peronoski. Strike two. Benson, and he uh, dwarfs many of the batters. Tony was quite an athletic star in his own right back in western Pennsylvania a number of years ago at Ferndale High School. Two strike count on Allison. Fastball outside, ball one. Dodger outfield playing Allison well around to the left. Out of play and into the seats along the left field line foul and it's still one and two.
Twins scored two runs in the sixth inning, one in the seventh. The Dodgers run in the seventh. Gillibrew leading at first. Allison at second with a double. Hit number eight for the Twins. The second off Paranowski. And the batter is Mincher. A single in three at bats. Field is near the edge of the infield grass. Strive. Mencher's hit today came off Kofax on a 3 2 pitch. He singled to left center field. up between home plate and third. He's tagged out and Allison has to hold at second. So with two out there are runners at first and second. For a moment it appeared there might be a collision between the shortstop Wills and the base runner at second Allison. Here's the way it looks by way of the instant replay as Roseboro gets the put out and then falls victim to the slippery turf. Frank Quillacy is the batter with Allison on second, Mincher on first, and two out in the last of the eighth. Quillacy hitless in two official at bats, he walked one time. Outside with a fastball, ball one. Twins rookie second baseman. Mario Wills had a word there at the mound with Paranowski. There is a balk as Paranowski came up on the rubber forgetting for the moment that there were base runners aboard. He was starting into his windup. So Allison moves to third and Mincher to second. And they'll put Quinnessy on with first base open and Pont waiting to bat. There is ball four. Struck out three times. Paranowski faced the cot just one time. That was in the seventh and got him on a swinging third strike. So the Twins have the bases loaded. Two out. In the Dodger ninth inning, Fairly, Lefevre, and Parker are the scheduled matters. Ball one. The runner. 
runner at third, Allison at second, Mincher at first, Pulisic. in the Dodger bullpen. Peronoski goes one and two-thirds innings. Has already given up three runs and is still responsible for the runner on second, Quillacy, and the runner on first, Cott. Three hits off Peronoski. He struck out one and walked two, one of them intentionally. So far in the series, as the Dodgers have uh, been forced to use relief pitchers where the Twins have not, the Dodger relievers have uh, decided not to make use of any vehicular transportation. So Miller now is taking the long walk across the outfield. And Peronoski heads for the Dodger dugout. Miller in the regular season appeared in 61 games, compiled a one loss record of six and seven, worked 103 innings, and allowed but 81 hits and a 2.97 earned run average. Five to one, the Twins lead in the bottom of the eighth. Miller comes into a situation with two out, two on, and two runs already across. He will be called upon to face the Twins' leadoff batter and shortstop, Zoil Oversayas, who in uh, the first two games of the series has certainly proven to be a spark plug to the Twins. Calm, always calm and poised Walter Alston. For a day that started with rain, Continuing into the early afternoon and the first several innings of the game, the day has brightened up considerably. And we have had no rain since the early innings. Versailles today has one hit in four at bats, a triple, but he has scored two runs, one of them on a wild pitch. second. Jim caught on first. Gilliam is playing a fairly deep third place to Versailles. Dodger outfield straight away. Side ball one. In the American League, the pitcher must take the sign on the rubber. Not so in the National League. And in the World Series, the league custom prevails. And a shallow center. And a 
fine catch by Willie Davis. He lost his hat, but made the catch. The Twins are out, having scored twice and leave two men on. So at the end of the eighth inning, the score is Minnesota 5 and Los Angeles 1. Stop. Using a stainless steel blade, getting a good shave, the best possible shave. You sure? When you bought it, the stainless steel blade was one of the best in the world. Today, you might as well forget it. It and every other ordinary stainless steel blade. Thanks to this, the Gillette Super Stainless, the totally new Gillette Super Stainless Blade. What makes it so much better than ordinary stainless steel blades? A new high chrome stainless steel that takes and holds an incredibly sharp edge. And a smooth new coating more effective than anything else discovered. The result? Miracle edges and a cleaner, closer, more comfortable shave. So don't buy just another stainless steel blade. Make it super stainless. Gillette super stainless with the miracle edges. Your shave will last longer. So will the blade. We move to the top of the ninth. For the Dodgers, Ron Fairley is the first man up. But right now, the tremendous speed of Willie Davis on our instant replay as he made that inning-ending catch in the bottom of the eighth. Fairley taking the breaking ball low for ball one. Fairley is two for three and has scored the Dodger run. He has two singles and three at-bats. One for four yesterday, including a homer. He's only hit a homer yesterday. It's one and one. Jim Cott has allowed six hits. He has struck out two. Strike two. This overwhelmingly twin-oriented crowd Cheering caught on, of course, in this uh, stage of the game with the Twins leading 5-1 to one in the ninth. Strikeout number three. Cott now has retired six in a row. And with one out in the ninth inning, the batter is Jim Lefevre. The box score would show him one for three. But it took a tremendous catch by Bob Allison in the fifth inning to rob him of a sure base hit. That catch might have turned the game around. Ball one low. with one away in the ninth inning. Lefevre comes up with a base hit, and here is Parker. He had just one official at bat, Parker, and came up with an infield hit. He had walked in the third and sacrificed in the seventh. Dodger runner, first baseman Mincher. Ball one is low. Oh, he's hit with a pitch. Low inside delivery hits Parker, and the Dodgers suddenly have two on with only one out. And the batter is Roseboro. One for three, a run-producing single back in the seventh inning. Batty and Versailles at the mound with Cott. since the middle innings, the Dodger bullpen, or rather the twin bullpen, has been almost constantly busy. John Roseboro, the Dodger catcher, waiting. 
wins five, the Dodgers one, top of the ninth. Foul, strike one. Step off the rubber by Cott. Mencher will take the sure out. Two away as the runners move up. The pitcher was in the on-deck circle, but manager Walt Austin now must go to his bench. And I believe it will be somebody who's been in the bullpen. Either Torborg or... Krasuski would be the guest by Vin Scully. And in a moment we will know. Dodger runners at second and third with two outs. Top of the ninth. And the twins, Jim Cott. Krasuski will be the batter. Dodger utility player. In the regular season. Appeared in 78 games, a 215 batting average. Nick Krasuski. Cloud is trying to emulate Jim Grant's route going job yesterday. Nick Krasuski comes to the plate. Twins outfield is straight away. Strike. Krasuski choking up on the bat a couple of inches. Lefty Jim Cox. Now you can wear your hair in simply dozens of delightful styles and know every hair will keep its place. Thanks to Adorn, the holdingest hairspray, Adorn never lets a do down. So let yourself go. Try your hair sleek and sultry with tantalizing side effects. Adorn it? Forget it. Adorn never lets a do down. Or be demure as a dimple. Style it sweet and simple. 
A Dorn never lets the dew down. And because a Dorn works invisibly, all the natural luster, all the softness and highlights shine through. Your hair looks natural, acts natural, and mm, feels natural. So try all the new styles. Have fun. Keep your hair high in a pyramid of swirls and curls. Adorn never lets a dew down. Adorn, the holiness hairspray. To review the game for you now, Ben Scully. Well, it appeared from this angle that the difference between the two teams was a difference between the white home uniforms of Minnesota and the traveling gray of the Los Angeles Dodgers. It was all twins after Gilliam's error in the sixth and the double and two singles by Killebrew and Batty to give the Twins a two to nothing lead. And in retrospect and in looking at the totals, it is quite apparent that the Dodgers could not come up with a big defensive play. On the contrary, they committed three errors. And Minnesota not only played well, they played superbly at the right time. He had some fine plays by Don Mincher at first base. He had a nice running catch by Joe Nosek going deep to center. And then you had the biggest play of the game, I believe, that tremendous diving catch by Bob Allison in the left field corner. Had that ball gotten by Allison, the Dodgers would have had at least runners at second and third and nobody out in the fifth inning. And, although we'll never know, it would certainly have changed the complexion of the game. So the Twins had it, and the Dodgers did not, and the scene will shift to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. For Jim Cott, the winning pitcher, allowing seven hits, only one walk, a boy who did not complete very many games in the American League. In 42 starts, he completed only seven, but he went all the way and set a World Series record for putouts by a pitcher. They have just announced he had five putouts for the record. For the Dodgers, Sandy Koufax allowed only one earned run, but it was enough to beat him because he allowed two runs and the Dodgers never did get even. For Koufax, it is the second time he has lost, and in his World Series record, his two defeats won to nothing to the Chicago White Sox when Bob Shaw beat him, the run coming over on a double play at the Coliseum in 59, and now his loss today when he allows just one earned run. The Twins have a strong jump now. They've won two, and it'll be Claude Osteen and Camilo Pasquale Saturday from Dodger Stadium. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for a showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. One other factor for the Minnesota Twins, they're timely hitting. They had nine hits to the Dodgers, seven, but the Twins got the maximum out of it. Yesterday, each side had ten hits, and again, the Twins had the maximum. Today, the Twins bunched their hits, two runs on three hits in the sixth inning, one run on one hit in the seventh, two runs on two hits in the eighth. The Dodgers, because of the great catch by Allison, wound up with runners at first and second and one out in the fifth and did not score. They had a runner at second with one out in the sixth and did not score. They had runners at second and third with one out in the seventh and one run over and then were turned away empty-handed. And then, fittingly, in the ninth inning, they left two more on a line drive to Jim Codd. So for the Dodgers, they are down two games to none. They go home to Dodger Stadium. Claude Osteen who has never lost to Minnesota. He was 5-0 and oh lifetime against the Twins when Claude was with Washington in the American League. The Dodgers will pin their hopes on left-hander Osteen, and it'll be the great right-hander Camilo Pasquale going for Minnesota. Tune in Saturday at 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the third game of this 1965 World Series, when your hosts, as today, again will be Gillette, the people who know men best, and Chrysler Corporation, famous for quality and engineering. Today's host, Dodge, and your local Dodge dealer. This is the CBC Television Network.